Well, hello, avid readers of Christian Fiction. I am so excited that you're here today. I am here with my friend Tosca Lee. So welcome, Tosca. Hi, thanks so much for having me. It's so great having you here. Why don't you just start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Well, let's see. Um, I live on a farm in Nebraska, and my husband is a farmer. And today is a rainy day, so he's getting a rest from planting. So we're so grateful for that. Um, if you know me at all or follow me on social media, then you know I have a 160-pound German shepherd named Timber <laughs> who provides lots of comic relief, especially during the pandemic. Um, and I do also write full-time, and um, I have uh, 11 books out and uh, have been doing this now for 15 years, I realized. So, that is um, so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So That is awesome. Well, we're going to be talking about all your books. But we're going to start with Progeny because okay. I went to Realm Makers last year and I inter I've interviewed a lot of the winners um, of who won the different categories last year, but also we're doing the book of the year winners. So this was mm. the book of the year. Do you remember what year? And I just have it on Audible. Oh, 17. I'm trying to get it so you can see it where it's not Ish. glaring. I love that <laughs> oh, color, there actually. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, yeah. So anyway, yeah. it's so good. I'm enjoying oh, it. Thank you. So much. <laughs> My husband has already finished it. Um, and he thought it's, oh, I think he's, over, he's on Firstborn now, which is the second book of the series for, so for those who aren't familiar with it, um, talk a little bit about it. And I have to say, like, don't, if, if you don't like scary stuff or heart <laughs> racing stuff before you go to bed, don't start <laughs> reading it or listening to it. I'm like, Oh my goodness, she's gonna die in the next <laughs> chapter. I'm like, oh my god, she's really gonna die. <laughs> All but right, tell us a little bit about it. Well, full transparency. When I made the switch, I'd been writing a historical biblical fiction. So when I switched to thrillers, my my full sole purpose and goal was to see if I could keep people up at night. So oh, there um, we go. <laughs> yeah, anytime I do that, I um, secretly high five myself. So. Um, the progeny is the story of the modern day descendants of real life historical figure, Elizabeth Bathroy. And I remember several, several years before I wrote it, um, one of my readers wrote to me and said, why don't you write about Elizabeth Bathroy? Well, who she is, is she was a Hungarian countess who lived She's in the late creepy. 1500s. Who she is. She's just... creepy. Yeah. Well, I, have I got a secret to share with you then? So she, she lived in the late 1500s and is rumored to be the most prolific female serial killer of all time. So she supposedly murdered like 600 plus young women or whatever. Mm. Um, of course, I kind of smell a conspiracy theory there. So I did go over to Croatia and Austria and Hungary and all the places uh, and go researching. Uh, for this series and I did put pictures so if you do read the book and want to follow along you can go to Pinterest and I have a board under oh, my wow. my boards and you can see all the real life places um, so it's a story about her modern day descendants who have been hunted now for uh, several centuries it's got secret societies it's got um, underground stuff and um, and while I was writing the book, I learned I am distantly related to Elizabeth Bathory. No way. Yeah. I like literally just got kissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, so that was not planned. That was uh, one of those weird that things. That is amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. And, and let me just assert that because she, the crown owed her so much money, and when she was finally put on trial and hold, they, they walled her up in a room in one of her 20 castles mm -hmm. until she died. Um, but when that happened, the crown was uh, um, relieved of all the debt that the king owed her. And then he went on to become the Holy Roman Emperor. So I don't know, conspiracy theory? I don't know. But yeah. I'd like to think Auntie Elizabeth <laughs> was not <laughs> evil. <laughs> so... Oh, that is so fascinating. And I was gonna, I was gonna ask you if you went, if you researched because, um, I mean, so my daughter's in the Czech Republic, but okay. Croatia okay. is where the Czechs go to vacation. Like that is, so they don't beautiful. go to anywhere else. Everyone goes to Croatia, and it's in August. Everyone goes to Croatia, and I've heard it's amazing and beautiful, and the beaches are wonderful. So you said you went to Croatia and Hungary and Austria, Austria like and a little bit of Italy. 
Yes, yes. Oh, and it was, and Croatia is beautiful. It was my first time there, loved it, and ate everything. <laughs> That's how Definitely. I research. I go to the place and I eat all the stuff. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And you said your so, Pinterest board has like information of yes, research. Yes. So all the real places that are in the book, you can go see the, there's a church mentioned there. So there's some castles, some statues, different things. So there's one for the progeny, one for firstborn. And then there's a board called the real life progeny. And on there, you'll see a picture of my mom with Sir Ian Moncrief, who is my distant relative tied to Elizabeth Bathroy. Okay. So you can see them there. Yeah, I just have goosebumps again, like twice. <laughs> Thank you, know that. I just so love weird. all that genealogy and oh, so amazing. And so, what I love is, um, I you know, being a writer, you kind of like can follow along with a book and kind of know where it's going. Mm -hmm. I've been like, oh, no, wait, wait, this person's supposed to be the bad guy. Wait, what's going <laughs> on? And I think that's been so fun for me. Um, first of all, uh, just those type of chase books high energy books are just fun too mm -hmm. but also you're able to like put stuff in there where you're like okay that makes sense but it's also surprising at the same time so it's not like it comes completely out of right field or whatever that's right. saying it's like yeah, it yeah. Makes sense with the story but also it's surprising in a fun way so i that's one thing that i really Yay. Enjoy. Yes. and you said so <laughs> i just have to know like when you're sitting down i bet there is there a lot of work going into plotting or Please don't tell me you're a seat of the pants writer that all this okay. comes out of your head. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I so in my one of my more recent books, the line the line between, I tried to be a pantser. I tried oh, and failed. I am not a pantser. I have to have an outline. So I did have I don't an outline. That if people yeah, I don't I don't either. It's a different way of the brain yeah. working that mine doesn't do. So <laughs> so no, no, definitely have a plot, but I also you know, I feel like you can you can design your plot and you can map it out, but it's different when you have boots on the ground and you're running through the story. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you have to allow some room for mystery and for things to pop out and jump out at you. So every now and then something, you know, will come along and be a little different. And, oh, wouldn't that be cool? So, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I was just surprised the other day someone was there and I'm like, what is he doing here? I don't know. We have to find out why this person's here. Right? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I do too. so good. Okay, so the two books are The Progeny and Firstborn. And Progeny won the Book of the Year, 2000 something something. 17. <laughs> like 17. 17. Yeah, actually, I think it was, I think it was actually the sequel. Firstborn that might have won that year. Oh, maybe. It might have been the sequel. Okay, maybe it was Firstborn, but I started with this one because. Right, because you have to read, read in order. You want to go yeah. in order. Yeah. And so, so my goal with the, okay, I, I do outline, but I don't outline both books at the same time. So mm -hmm. I wrote myself into a corner with the first book, and then I had to figure out how to get myself out with the second book. So I outline only apparently one book at a time. But yeah. my goal was to see if I could up the stakes and make it even faster in the second book. So oh, uh, good. that was super fun. <laughs> good. Well, that's, that's what I'll be listening to next weekend. <laughs> The narrators on those audiobooks do such a good job. Mm -hmm. I think they're they're fantastic. So that's awesome. Okay, let's talk. With, let's go back and talk about getting started writing Christian fiction. You said you started with biblical fiction, um, mm -hmm. and not typical biblical fiction. Um, so let's start a little bit. But your writing journey, how you got started, and then your first books. Yeah, so, you know, I, I didn't really, like, dream of being a writer when I was young. I, I wanted to be a ballet dancer. That was my mm -hmm. big goal in life. And when I was a teen, uh, I was very serious about it. But I had an injury that set me back about a year. So it became mm -hmm. apparent that maybe this wasn't going to pan out for me. So I went off to college. I went to school in Massachusetts. I came home to Nebraska my freshman year for spring break. I'm the only person I know who goes to Nebraska for spring break. So <laughs> <laughs> I came home and I was talking to my dad and I was talking about some, you know, my favorite thing about great books and the fact that they are roller coasters mm -hmm. and they've got twists and turns and emotional loops. And I, that day I just blurted it out and I said, dad, I think I'd really like to write a book. And my dad said, okay, Tosca, I'll make you a deal. 
I will pay you what you would have made working at the bank this summer, because I was going to be a bank teller for the second summer in a row. I will pay you what you would have made working at the bank if you come home, write your first novel, do it full time, and treat it like a job. Wow. I like literally just got, I never get goosebumps as much. Re like, <laughs> That was the best dad ever. Oh my word. I mean, and at the time I didn't think too much of it, but he changed my life that mm. day with that mm. suggestion. And of course I took him up on it because A, I was a miserable bank teller. B, I'm <laughs> terrible at math. I'm terrible at names and faces. So that summer I wrote my first really terrible, awful, very bad novel. Yes. <laughs> it was about the Stonehenge people and and I tried to get it published. I tried to get an agent. And uh, my rejection letter, which I found not too long ago, goes like this. Dear Miss Lee, I sent it to Writer's House in New York City. So, <laughs> full of confidence. This was nice. But we all think we're amazing when we first started. Right? We're all like, I mean, yeah, just send it to New York. No problem. <laughs> so, dear Miss Lee, even after reading the 23-page synopsis, <laughs> We're still not sure what this book is about. Your plot lacks tension. Your characters are two-dimensional. But it is strangely reminiscent of Clan of the Cave Bear, which was a book I loved when I was growing up. And so what I took away from that was my book is like Clan of the Cave Bear. I should probably keep doing this. So. That's amazing that they've read <laughs> all 23 pages. And we're still like... I mean, to give that much feedback is pretty amazing, I would think. It was pretty amazing. I'm sure I would not get that today. And I, when I saw that, I died a little inside when I rediscovered this letter. I mean, died. <laughs> I was so mortified. But I, I kept writing. And I was writing another book for nine years, which is a really long time. And I never finished mm -hmm. it. I kept trying to fix and perfect the beginning, which is, as you know, death. <laughs> so, and, um, and so typical. I mean, so typical. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you want it to be perfect, but you can't do that. So um, it's still not done. But as I was working on that, about the ninth year in, I, I had this idea to write a story about a fallen angel telling his life story. Mm -hmm. And I wanted it to be the story of the Bible and the story of history since the time before the creation of time and the creation of the world. Um, and as, I wanted it to be a story of grace told from an inverted point of view. And so I wrote this book called Demon, a Memoir and wrote it in about six weeks. And I thought the angels have sung and the clouds have parted and this is meant to be. And no, nope, it took six years to get that published. But that was wow. my very first published novel. So I did that one. And when I sold it, they said, what else have you got? And I literally had a single notebook page about a very old Eve at the end of her life, preparing to tell her life story. And so they bought that. That became Hava, the story of Eve. And so that's kind of how it started. So Yeah. And so tell us, <laughs> tell us your books, um, and then your okay. biblical fiction, and then what made you decide to switch to, um, well, switch genres? Yeah, so uh, there's Demon and Memoir. So it takes, it's contemporary, but it is biblical. Mm -hmm. um, it's the story of the Bible, and then Hava, the story of Eve, and then I've got one called uh, Iscariot, which is the story of Judas yep. Iscariot, and then I uh, and I write in first person a lot. So after doing that and being, I'm a first century Jewish man. I'm a first century Jewish man. For <laughs> the years it took me to write that, I decided I, I wanted to be to inhabit my feminine side again. So mm -hmm. I wrote a book called The Legend of Sheba about the Queen of Sheba. Mm -hmm. and um, fell in love with my husband while I was writing that. And he actually proposed at my first book signing for that oh. book at Barnes & Noble. So that one's, I don't have a favorite, you know, you know, you don't have favorites, but that one is a little special to me because of that. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> I did a trilogy with Ted Decker uh, in between Iscariot and, I think Iscariot and Sheba. And, and then I did switch to thrillers because... Those, the, you know, as you know, the historical ones take so much, uh, take so much research, take so much yeah. time. And then when you're dealing with scriptural stories, too, then that just adds another layer of, you know, pressure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you really need to double check a lot of stuff. And so I just wanted to write something contemporary where I didn't have to look up what people wore, ate, you know. 
everything. <laughs> everything. I mean, you still do research, but it's different, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then I just wanted to see how fast paced I could make it. And I wanted to give that roller coaster ride that I love so much with the twists and the turns and the loops. And everything, so. I love that. So, <laughs> was, was Progeny your first one in the thriller category? Yes. Progeny, then Firstborn, then The Line Between, and A Single Light, which are a duology. It's, those are a, a pandemic duology, and they came out in 2019, oh, wow. right before COVID. So those are my most recent books, and it's been a weird couple of years after writing that and then having so, the like, second one you, come out so right before. Read those. I haven't read this. So you wrote about the pandemic, and then the pandemic happened? I wrote about a pandemic, yeah, and then the and then COVID happened. And even though it's a different kind of disease in my books, a lot of the same things happened. Mm -hmm. So it was very eerie. The first hot spot in my book was in Washington State, and you know people start wearing masks, and there's you know runs on different stuff at the store. Not toilet paper. Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> That, you know, tr life is weirder than fiction, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So didn't see that, but, you know, the masks, the hand sanitizer. And when COVID happened, we just happened to have a supply of all these things because we had been sending out surgical masks, hand sanitizer, and quarantine stickers with our swag bags to influencers. Oh, my so word. It, it's, been, <laughs> it's been weird. And the search for a vaccination, all this stuff that kind of went down and so that's been a, it's been a weird few years. <laughs> so your next book's about a prophetess who listens to a prophet, correct? You no, know, it's about an author who wins the lottery. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's why we keep saying, you know, it's got to be about an author who wins the lottery or something because you can't do this anymore. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Okay. And it's, so the, yeah. yeah, it was, I bet it was like deja vu when you're seeing. It was like, a little you, bit. Yeah, it was a little bit. And, you know, people aren't shaking hands. They're searching for a vaccine. And, and some people places, you know, are, are like, we don't have them yet. It just, you know, go home, stay home, stay home, stay safe, that whole thing. So it was, uh, it was, it was odd. But it, like I said, it's a different disease. Um, yeah. This is a prion disease. So people go crazy, and then they die. So that's, oh, that's, yeah, yeah scary. Yeah. <laughs> so almost like what was that Brad Pitt movie? Oh, zombies. yeah, um, World War Z. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. movie. My Which kids I am a fan of, actually. <laughs> well, I, I know, it's so funny. My kid, I, I don't like, well, this mm -hmm. is a good thing, too. I don't like super scary stuff. And your books are not, like, they're just fast paced. No. Like, for, yeah. you know, you know what I mean? It's not going to yeah. creep me yeah. out or whatever, which no. yeah. I appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> but my kids are like, you're gonna like this movie, mom, and I'm like, no, I won't. And I actually, end up liking the movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I did too. I like the pacing and the storytelling in it, so I am. Yeah. I do like that one. That's yeah. good. Okay, so what are you working on now? <laughs> um, so just um, sold a book with Marcus Brotherton, who uh, is probably best known for his nonfiction, World War II nonfiction. And so we just sold a World War II story, a novel about three best friends from Mobile, Alabama, who enlist in 1941, go off to the Philippines, and then Pearl Harbor happens, and mm -hmm. they eventually become part of the Bataan Death March. And mm -hmm. so uh, a kind of a really grueling story, but it's a story of friendship and hope and brotherhood. And uh, so that comes out May of next year. Awesome. Yeah. Can you tell us the title or do you know the title? Or? Um, so far it's called The Long March Home, but as you know, these things do sometimes yes. <laughs> change. So, Well, that, you know, that so. sounds amazing. So I have a Bataan Death March novel too. Oh, um, yeah. you do? Mm -hmm. It's called uh, Dawn of a Thousand Nights. And when I was researching for my European World War II novels, I was at a World War II convention. And this man came up and he said, I'm here with my cousin. I'm not, I'm because it was the 11th Armored Division, who was a tank division in Europe. Yeah. He says, I wasn't part of the 11th Armored Division, but I was in the Bataan Death March. Would you write my story or our story? And I said, yes. And I had no idea. No idea. I'm not, I didn't know what continent it was on. Like just this man standing there in front of me. And wow. so his information ended up interviewing. This was back in 2003. So some of those men were still alive. Right, right. And viewing some of the men that were in the Bataan Death March and then later were prisoners 
in Japan. Um, mm. So I am going to be looking. So when it comes for endorsements, re reach out to me. I'm writing it down right now. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, yeah, so you understand very, very much how how tough of a story that is, and mm -hmm. and so to prepare to write this, we we read um, we read so many accounts of the survivors mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. many common threads, depend even though they were from different companies and yeah. outfits. But um, what a story! I mean, and what a what a dark chapter it yeah. was. And many people don't realize that Clark Field in the Philippines was bombed only eight hours after Pearl Harbor, and yes. they never received any backup. They never received any food, any help. They were just left there, and they held it till April. I can't remember the date. Yeah, I'm sure you, this is more recent. Your April <laughs> like twentieth or something. Yeah, so, but, yeah, with no from food. December seventh, no with nothing. Yeah, and they yeah. were able to hold the island until April, and um, Jess, the men. I mean, all these years, and anytime I was able to talk to a veteran, it's like they start telling the story and they're, they're there again. Like, yeah. it's not, this happened a long time ago. It's like, I, it's, they become present tense. I see, I smell, I experience, and it's just wow. such a... Uh, okay, now I have chills. Yeah, yeah, it's such an honor to do that. I'm so excited about that book. <laughs> I'm excited too. And also, Marcus actually, um, he has a nonfiction book that he wrote with the estate of a survivor that's out this month called A Bright and Blinding Sun. And okay. it's the true story of a, a guy named Joe Johnson who enlisted, lied about his age, enlisted at 14 and was part of the 31st Infantry and became a POW at 15. And so that um, book is out this month, and that's a nonfiction, <laughs> yeah, nonfiction story. And he became the company Bugler, bu bu Bugler, Bugler. Wow. Bugler. So yeah, I've learned. I just, and this is not something I knew anything about before. So um, yeah, how did you go? So going from uh, biblical historical fiction to thriller <laughs> to World War II. I mean, mm -hmm. is it, I, I know some of, so much is the same, but was mm -hmm. there something different now that you're working on your new book that you've discovered? You know, I think, I think the, the setting changes and the research mm -hmm. details change, but human nature doesn't change, mm -hmm. you know, wherever you set it. So, and I'm going to jump back in time. I'm going back to the European witch, witch hunts now, um, oh. next. So that'll be my next, uh, my next thing. But once again, the research is is always there. But you know, human nature doesn't change, and our hopes and desires and um, the things we want out of life, I, mm -hmm. they don't change. Absolutely. So yeah. yeah. Okay, European witch hunts. Are you going to go have to go travel for research? Like maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I would really like to. Uh, so much of the story is set in Germany. So, um, yeah, I, I would really like to. It's been kind of touch and go with COVID. But mm -hmm. now that things are kind of becoming a little more opened up and normalized, um, hopefully. Yeah. If you find yourself in Berlin, I know an awesome tour guide there. I've done online tours with him before. He is so smart. Like Okay. Yeah. yeah. Might need to know this. <laughs> Might you, need to know. If you end up in Berlin, I'll connect you with Martin. But uh, thank you. Yeah, because I've sure. been talking to him about some World War II ideas. Because you know, we always our minds are always like do 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 yep. what's up there. So, uh, in fact, the novel I'm writing currently has a World War II tie about a princess that was in a concentration camp. Wow, uh, the actual, actual princess was in a concentration camp, and that's an idea. I heard I probably heard about it 15, no, maybe, maybe 20 years ago when I'm researching for these other World War II books I did, you know, and so I think it's amazing how we just plug stuff away in our mind and then yep. pull them out. And you, you have a zillion books. What book, what book number is this for you that you're working it's on? Like now? 80 something. 80 something. Yeah. But, you know, I have, like, a children's book in there. I'm, I'm tired just thinking about it. Books and you've in got there. two kids. I, I, wanted, I need to know exactly what you have for breakfast. Please share everything. <laughs> <laughs> Today it was hummus and carrots because that's what I had time to eat. So. <laughs> 
that's that's so, yeah, no time to eat. You know, I, no. I uh, married into four children a few years yeah. ago, and um, and I used to be a night owl, and mm. I used to write my books all night long. And now, like ten o'clock rolls around, and I'm like, is that time <laughs> so, and a farmer's wife. I mean, do you have to have early? <laughs> uh, I don't. But one of my great joys, and maybe this is the Korean side of me, but one of my great joys in life is taking him lunch. I just, I think because my love language is food or something. Mm -hmm. But yeah. You know, I love that part of it. I don't know a lot about farming. I was a city girl before this, so I was a single city girl. Now I'm a farmer's wife and mother of four. <laughs> yeah, are you going to write about that? Because I want to know about that. I, I, I should. It, it would be a comedy. <laughs> Yeah, there's been a lot of funny moments on the farm and I'll never forget the first time one of the twins when they were younger, one of them came running in and I just happened to be out here. I was still dating their dad. And he said, Tosca, Tosca, there's a turkey in the yard. And I thought this will be great social media. So I run out there with my phone. And even I, a city girl, knew that that was not a turkey, but a black chicken. And so I called my my husband to be's mom who lives around the corner. And I said, there's a chicken in the yard, an interloper. What do I do? And she said, oh, just put it in the dog kennel. So I turned to the boys and I said, all right, kids, go catch that chicken. And they looked at me and they said, we're not touching it. And the one <laughs> said, but you can borrow my gloves. So I had to, oh. so there I was. So I have caught chickens and put them in the dog kennel, and we've had lots of adventures out here. That would be such a good book. I mean, this is a completely different <laughs> genre. But I was able to write the novelization of Mom's Night Out, which, you know, they did the movie, and then they yes. like, who, who do we need to write the novel? Oh, this lady with 10 kids. Let's have her <laughs> write about these crazy moms. Anyway, oh. but it, that would be such, like, in that fun genre of, Oh, that would be, you need to think about that because that would be I'll so I'll think good. about it. I, I'm keeping a running list of adventures. Yeah. I love that. I love that so much. Yeah. Oh, and they're all on Instagram. So, you know, if you're watching and you want to see the funny adventures, I, between that and the dog, and there's not a lot of writing pictures happening, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. in theory, that's happening too. <laughs> I know because people have these like such cute little stories and stuff. And I'm, I put makeup on and did my hair today because I'm interviewing you. And usually I'm like t shirts and sweatpants and no makeup and ponytails. And I'm like, I put makeup on to talk job, to you people. today. Yeah, yeah, this hair is dirty. That's why it's up like that. So, <laughs> well, it looks adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, I would love to hear some Christian fiction novels that you've been enjoying. Or recently, uh, or far back, or what are you yeah. loving? Well, you know, I, even though I'm not writing in the, the genre right now, I, I really do love biblical fiction. And so uh, I'm real good friends with Misu Andrews. So if you're familiar with Misu, uh, she has a new book coming out called Potiphar's Wife. Um, and it's, I, I love watching what she's doing. Um, I love her her travels. She was in Israel right as COVID was starting to lock wow. everything down and I was worried she wouldn't get back in time. Um, she's a neat lady with a neat heart and and she writes great stories about uh, cool chapters in biblical history. So I'm excited for Potiphar's wife. Um, and then there's also, as you know, many other um, biblical fiction authors mm -hmm. as well. But that's a genre that I, I always enjoy and uh, hope to return to one of these days. So, um, yeah, I, I'd have to say that. And especially, you know, I'm really excited about um, shows like The Chosen because of yes. this as well. I love so, The Chosen. They're doing yeah. such a great job with that. It's really yeah. cool to see such a wonderful quality um, series uh, put together under such great directorship. So, um, yeah, I just yeah. I love to see that come together. Yeah. yeah. And we watch it with my whole family. And everyone loves it. Like my from my eleven year old to our if our older kids are over, adult kids are over watching it. And um, you know, it's not like anyone's sitting there going, "This is dumb. This is cheesy." We're all right. like, "Oh my gosh, this is so good!" And that says yes. something that they're able to capture all of our attention and just do such a good job. Yeah. And you know, I mean, it's not exact for 
word for word what's in the Bible because like there's you know five chapters that they need right, to turn right. into this whole thing. Right. But it's so true to like what I mean God's heart is is yeah. I just love it so much. I, and I think that's that's at the heart of every story is, you know, God's heart. And that's something I discovered writing Iscariot because I had done all the research and I over-researched and I was protecting myself with research and I was paranoid about it. And and at the end of the day, the thing that really made that story come together for me was just this relationship with with I, as the narrator, I, I quit being Judas somewhere along the way. And at some point that story became my story. And so just the relationship that I was able to explore and have with Jesus Christ and to sit down beside him, that's what made that book so special. And so those stories that really get to the heart of relationship are the ones that I, yeah. I love so much. Oh, so good. Okay. So if you haven't read any of Tosca's books, you need to go check them out and um, get them on Kindle or paperback or audible like I am. Um, so good. I cannot wait for your book next year i can't Thank wait you. to hear about what you're going to be doing in europe and <laughs> hopefully you'll be able to go that would be amazing yeah that would <laughs> <laughs> yeah but where yeah, can people that... follow you online and just connect with you online and find out more about you and keep keep up with everything that you're doing yeah absolutely so i'm on here i'm on facebook at toscalee.com in fact, I'm reading live tonight. That's something I started doing during the pandemic just to oh. entertain. And so I still like to do it on occasion when I can. And I'm reading from Hava, the story of Eve. So uh, Facebook, Instagram, that's where you'll see like any weird chicken photos or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram, I, I eventually have started to dip my toe into TikTok. I it's have like, not yet. So it's. I, it's intimidating and you know I only have a few videos there but you know you can go look at them <laughs> you can come up with so, a writer dance or something I don't yeah know. yeah we, a writer dance yeah yeah it's mostly like animals over there so yeah but so cool know. and, and Twitter, then you're gonna, Twitter. oh and Twitter and you're gonna be at the Realm Makers you're keynoting at the Realm Makers yes. conference so excited year. And I'll be at American and... Christian Fiction Writers this year, too. Oh, good. For the okay. first time in several years. So I'm really excited to, to be back. So that's yeah. that'll be fun. Well, good. Well, I'll see you at World Makers. I will not be at ACFW this year because, you know, we're spending all my money taking our whole family to that's, World yeah. Makers. Yeah. We're, we're stopping at D.C. on the way. Our kids have never been. Our younger kids oh, have never been to Washington, D.C. And That'll be really um, cool. So it's going to be, you'll see our fan. Well, only four of us are attending the conference, but there's going to be eight of us there. Okay. Eight or nine. Nine of us there. So you'll be seeing the go. You'll have a whole group <laughs> going around. You're going to need a, like one of those buses or vans to transport. We everyone. have a 12 passenger van. <laughs> I drive a 12 passenger van. Yeah. That's what you need. Well, and so. you know, you don't know this, but the very first time I ever went to ACFW, Trisha, I was behind you checking in. And I remember the lady who was checking you in was like, do you have books on you? And I was just watching because she was she was looking at you and you had a book and you just gave it to her. And I was like, this is how you do it. And Aww. I will never forget. It was my first thing. You know, it might have been a trade show. It might not have been ACFW. I think it might have been uh, one of the Christian uh, book trade shows. And, but I was watching you and watching the way you interacted and you had some books in your bag and you gave her one. And, and I just remember as a, a newbie author, you know, just getting out for the first time, I was like, okay, this is, this is how you, this is how you, you do it. And, oh, and I, I always think of that. Yet. I don't even know. <laughs> you wouldn't cool. have known me. And, and, yeah. but I, I always think of that in, and you don't know that, but it had such an impact on me so mm. that when I go out, I know, like, you know, give, give extra to people, give to people and, and always be gracious because that's exactly what you are and were. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And I still, yeah. I love doing that too. I try to keep a couple on my car. So lady at the post office was asking, what are you mailing? I mean, it's a perfect opportunity yeah. and you don't know where they are in their walk with God and hey, yeah. I have a book. I'll show you it. And they're, People are so excited. I've never had anyone not accept a book. So, right? So. Yeah. And she said, are you signing? Are you giving? And you said, here, I've got one. And you just gave it right to her. And she didn't have to jump through hoops or try to get time off or leave her post or anything. And yeah. I just, I will never forget that. Oh, so, awesome. I love that. Well, I'm yeah. so excited to see you in July. Um, yes, me too. 
Great big hug. Great big hug. We'll have time to chat, hopefully. Yes. Yeah, yeah we but will. But thank you for being here today. Um, Absolutely. Again, go get Tosca's books and uh, go look for her chicken <laughs> It's always but, something. It's always something. <laughs> well, thank you I only so have much. four kids, so I can't say anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, friend. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for watching and joining us.